Hello and welcome, I'm Graham Roberts. This uh, demonstration is about a moving shape. It's going to be a circle and we're going to move the circle around the screen. The screen will be a canvas that we create using um, the swing toolkit that is part of BlueJ and part of the Oracle Java system. So first we're going to create the class and I'm going to call the class a moving shape. It could be called moving circle. It's just I want to be more generalist and say well it could be any shape that we're moving really. Well we're going to have a moving shape and I'm going to put the code directly in. No secret. I've already got this working okay we're going to be looking at the code and building it up um, really from scratch but um, uh, at the start I want to show you how it is going to work so first there's the code and in BlueJ one can as you will probably know check out the documentation the Java doc uh, and here we can see the hierarchy of moving shape is that it is inheriting jpanel from the swing library which is in itself inheriting from j component from the swing library and the windows toolkit container and the windows toolkit component so you can see there's a whole history going on here of development already when we just come in and sort of cheat and use what's already been developed well that is what I've done so let's close that and compile and we're going to use not the bench but we're just going to run the program and what we get as you can see is a circle technically an ellipse and we can see that the coordinates are drawn onto our canvas area. Now this canvas area is actually 500 pixels wide and 300 pixels tall as it were. And the height does not start from the bottom left hand corner as you might expect from an ordinary manually drawn graph where you have 0, 0 down here in the bottom left hand corner and as the x value grows so might the y value grow such that you get a straight line uh, y equals mx being the formula well it's not like that at all no that would be too easy wouldn't it the coordinates actually start from the top left hand corner and go down so if you were to do what I've just described um, and increase the x and y coordinates you'd actually get a diagonal going from here uh, down to here and that would be that diagonal as it were or the line would be called a, a well a line but it would form a polygon if you kept uh, clicking it around on the canvas you would create a polygon with um, a number of sides but that's something for another demonstration the purpose of this particular demonstration is to show how we can um, exploit the coordinate system of the swing toolkit and this is what we're going to do so if I press my you can't see me doing this but I'm actually pressing the arrow keys on my keyboard I'm running of course Windows BlueJ on Windows and what I get is it moves to the right or I press the left arrow key and it moves to the left. If I move, uh, press the down arrow key, it goes down. And notice that down is literally down from the top of the screen to the bottom, not as you might have expected in an ordinary graph where it's sort of going up. So when we come right to the maximum of this particular uh, canvas, we have an x coordinate of 384. So the x coordinate of 384 is uh, where the ellipse is being drawn from, and the y coordinate 
is where it's being drawn from. Uh, we come back to how it's drawn in a moment. Okay, so um, if I was to maximize this, you'll see that I can actually move the shape down very far, right? And um, what's that about? Well, it's because I haven't actually made it uh, insisted on the canvas not being in, um, enlargeable. So it can be enlarged. And interestingly, because of the Swing Toolkit's power, I can actually um, write code that will adjust to um, where, whatever size the canvas is. As you can see, it is not, well, maybe you can't see this. So let me, I'll move my, right to the end here on the right. And I'm pressing the arrow key right. It is not going anywhere, visibly anyway, because I have constrained the shape. Let me just click here. So this pops down again back to its normal size, which I designed. We can see the coordinates though are still, the X coordinate is 1820 pixel and the Y coordinate is 347. And it's off the screen, yes. If I click this, it's on the screen. If I click this uh, minimize arrow, it, um, sorry, window icon, it, it, it is visibly gone. However, I have a secret power. If I press my space bar on my keyboard, it pops back into the center. Uh, we we'll see how that is accomplished in a moment. It's actually very simple because the toolkit is so powerful. Okay, so um, if I go back into maximize and I press the space bar, it goes to the middle. Good game, eh? So I can get that back again. What I'm showing is that we can control the shape, draw it where we want, even animate the shape using input from the keyboard. So how do we do that? Right, well, let's look at the code uh, briefly uh, because then we want to look at the code more deeply as we make it happen, as it were. But I just want to show you an uh, overview of this the toolkit, Swing and Windows toolkit, are imported here. The constructor is the class, the moving shape, and it extends the J panel. We saw that that was so from the documentation. What we didn't see was it's implementing an interface known as the key listener interface, which, not surprisingly, listens to the keyboard. And we have some instance variables, very few. We just have three, actually. The uh, instance variable, the X coordinate, the instance variable, the Y coordinate, and this instance an ellipse, we need a size for the shape, which is 100 pixels. So I could make this smaller. I could make this just 10 pixels, for instance, <laughs> 10 pixels, and run this, uh, because the illustration is what the demonstration is for. So if I run this, and I show you, all right, there it is. And it's tiny, tiny now because I made it uh, a tenth of what it was in uh, width anyway. As you know, because of the way circles are defined, it's actually very much smaller than you might have thought by reducing it by a tenth, it's actually tiny. And similarly, if we enlarge it, we get a much larger actual circle than we might have expected from just the numbers but what we can see because this is so small is that when it's in zero and zero we can see that it's drawn from zero zero so uh, the circle if we we think of it as a circle is actually not the coordinates in the middle of the center the the, the center of the circle it's not drawn from there but it's drawn from uh, adjacently as it were right if I press the space bar what will happen yep it goes into the center okay so that was that so we get rid of that go back into our editor and have a look at the paint component well the paint component uh, creates an ellipse 
and uh, we fill the oval uh, using the parameters that we need to draw the shape and we set the color and uh, we draw the coordinates in black the coordinates being the x and y values um, they start off at 10 and 20 uh, but showing the coordinates is very much part of this demonstration because i really do want to um, ensure that you appreciate that the coordinates are in the top left hand corner and not as you might expect especially if you've done a lot of mathematics or geometry that they'd be at the bottom left or graphing uh, of different kinds okay well once you've got that sorted uh, things tend to really quite accelerate in terms of what you can do the boundary checking here is how we manage to keep the shape within the size of what I'm calling the canvas um, basically the current screen or window that we're using and this is done using the power of the toolkit which literally knows the width of the window since it draws it it would wouldn't it well the getter for the width is mm -hmm, get width and so we can actually find the width and then if we take away the size of the shape the current size of the shape we can say that's where we want x to be and then we ensure that the circle is not drawn off screen it's drawn within the boundary of the screen on the right hand side and um, we do that on the left hand side by saying if x is negative we make it zero the y coordinate is similarly treated as you see that's really just the same starting from the top left hand corner and we make sure that the circle does not go beyond the bottom of the screen the height of the screen and we do exactly the same actually it's the same rubric we look at the size we take the size from the height and then we say y must not exceed that value and then it is drawn indeed inside let's see that happening uh, we go again and I'll pull it into the center All right so I go to the right and it can't exceed that I'm pressing the right arrow key and there's no joy it's not good I press the up arrow key and there's no joy it won't go beyond zero for the y coordinate and down it won't go beyond the effective limit of the shape which is of course the height of the window but less the actual size of my shape and that's why we're using a circle because it's actually sim simpler to draw it that way okay so um, that's it in the center um, we said we could enlarge the screen can we actually make the screen smaller well I've made it really quite small now uh, one of the benefits of having a very small shape may be that if I do that and I click uh, sorry press the space bar yes it's put it into the center of the screen and what if I press the right arrow key it goes up into its limit down to its limit up into its limit on X and Y as before so that's quite a powerful but simple algorithm that we've coded in there to make sure it keeps on our canvas and you can see the coordinates are still being drawn in black whereas the shape is yellow so let's have a look at the code again and so we've looked uh, just really just looking down in the code for the moment we can see that we're looking at the key typed um, event handler well we don't use that and the key released event and we don't use that but because this is an interface we have to actually have a reference an override reference to what is expected in the interface so 
we don't use them, but uh, we override and say, if we were going to use them, this is what we do, but we're not doing anything with them. And it's not really, we have a contract, we can't not put these in, the compiler will complain. Uh, what am I talking about? It's this key listener in, uh, interface that's being implemented in Java. Right, so we, we have the power of that, but we also have to comply with the contract that it sets up for us that we acknowledge that uh, these have to be addressed in that interface. Uh, to get the center circle effect is very straightforward. We just find the current value of y and x, and we, well, divide by two. And, well, we take account of the size, so that we do actually get the uh, middle and not the offset. So, um, remember these were two of the three instance variables that we had right at the start. So that's why it was so flexible and yet very simple code. What makes it all work is, of course, the instantiation in the main method. And here we have um, a J frame class is called frame. And we instantiate it using the new keyword and the J frame constructor. And the title is given of moving shape. And now this is quite important. The moving shape class that we actually did make ourselves at the start of this video is declared here. And then we just call it panel. We could have called it something else. We could have called it canvas. Is assigned using the new keyword. And the constructor is executed. Well, we know what's in the constructor because in the constructor we have the uh, add key listener. So we actually put a listener onto this particular class. This particular object, when it's instantiated, gets a little listener. Why do we do that? Well, let's emphasize this line here. Set focus a bold true. We have to focus on that canvas, that panel. It's very important. Otherwise, when we are pressing the space key or pressing the arrow keys, it won't know what we want to address. Well, we're very clear about this. We say that we want to pick up the keys when they are addressing that particular panel. OK, so that was that. And after that, we readdress the frame object and make sure we put the panel, that's this part, the canvas, into the frame. Then we set the size to be 500 pixels wide and 300 pixels high. But this is, as you saw, completely flexible. It's just how it starts off. And then we set the default close operations, exit on close. And you saw when I clicked the um, arrow on the window, I could actually close the whole program and dismiss the window. This is quite important. We need to set visible true. Otherwise, we have the object. We just can't see it. Uh, this fools quite a few people. Right, let's um, let's um, just comment that out and close this, compile, and then run this. Now, I'm, I'm going to be running it, and I'm looking uh, everywhere for it, but I can't see it. It's invisible. Oh, dear. Whereas if I come back in to the text and take out that comment, so it is itself visible code to the compiler, when I run it this time, we should find that it appears. Right. So there it is. OK, so now we're going to uh, really start again in a second phase of this to build up from scratch this um, particular demonstration. 
If you are already familiar with the code or you've looked at it, so I will make it available, then that second part you may not need. And uh, so you can close the video at this point. I hope it's been useful. Otherwise, if you're staying with us, uh, we will have a slight pause and come back. OK, I've set up my class moving shape. I've set my constructor up and I've set up a main method. And I put into the main method in the instantiation of the moving shape. Now, I called it panel earlier. I'm going to just call it canvas, just for the sake of the difference, uh, here. So um, when we inst instantiate the canvas, we should see something. Um, OK, so this is what we've got at the moment. I'm going to run this and um, nothing. Right. Well, that's what we expect, isn't it? Because there's nothing really going on. Uh, we instantiated the moving shape, but there's nothing in the object of any use to us. There's nothing to actually wow us in any way. So what we need to do, first of all, is to set up the panel or the canvas. Now, in order to do that, we need to import java.swing.asterisk meaning everything in that library. We need to import java.awt.asterisk, everything in that Windows Toolkit library. Then we need to import the uh, java.awt.event.asterisk because we want everything in the events that are captured, um, particularly from the keyboard we're interested, in the Windows Toolkit. So these have certain statements and we need to explain what their purposes are as we go along. We need to look at the x, y and size instance variables that we're going to create and know why we have them. If you pardon the pun there, I mean my potential pun. And then we're going to show the moving shape constructor that we're going to add the key listener. We're going to set the focus focusable to true and uh, we're going to emphasize that those lines are crucial. So right at the top, we need to place our imports. And there we have these imports. These libraries are essential for us to exploit them. We need to import them. And I am definitely exploiting these libraries. There's very little work that I have actually done to get the swing uh, demonstration to look so useful and functional. It's me exploiting these toolkits that happen to have been around for quite a few years now, but are available nonetheless in BlueJ for development. OK, so what's the next thing we need to do? Well, we need to create the canvas or panel, don't we? So that's what we should do next. Well, we need to actually extend because we are inheriting. So we're going to extend JPanel from Sorry, moving shape is going to extend from JPanel. Right, so we're going to extend JPanel. And we get JPanel from the Swing library. See, there's no syntax errors. I've just compiled that. No syntax errors. OK, so we wanted to create canvas what else do we need to do? The class that we're going to use that's in the Swing Toolkit, and we're just going to call it Frame here, and we're going to instantiate a new uh, JFRAM called Moving Shape. 
and um, then we are going to um, instantiate our canvas which is really a panel that is on going to be put onto that frame and then of course we need to do what we just said add the pane or the panel rather and I'm going to call it canvas just for the sake of difference from the previous part and uh, set the size and make sure the window can be shut down and make sure it can be seen okay so let's compile that So what we should see now is it compiles when we get the cases correct and so on. Java is case sensitive, so you're very picky about which case uh, letters are in. So you can't have a small case J or a, a small case if when you're referring to this particular type, as it were. Anyway, we've got all that sorted. But we're still doing nothing. So what's the next thing we need to do? Well, we need to have some instance variables. So let's put those in here. And we're making sure that they're private. Um, and as we said before, we have the X coordinate, the Y coordinate. And we have a size for the shape. Uh, we compile that. Everything is fine. So we still won't get anything visible because we haven't painted anything. So what we need to do next is investigate the paint component. Well, it, where would we put it? Well, it doesn't really matter too much, but we're going to put it underneath the constructor. So we put it here and I'm going to put in, um, just for some fun, a slightly different um, paint painting. I'm just going to auto lay out this. All right, so what we're going to do is um, have this essential override of the uh, paint component. We're going to use the super constructor constructor. We're going to call it super, super dot paint component. And we're going to call it G because that is, well, necessary. We're passing to it the graphics object. And... So this graphics object G has to be addressed, used, invoked. And we do that using the um, method of set color, set something to red. And then the something in this case is a rectangle with coordinates X and Y and X and Y for the corners of the rectangle, 50, 50 and 100, 100. So I mean, it's, it's there and it doesn't do anything or on the canvas but we do have a little rectangle. You would have recognized that we weren't actually drawing the coordinates on the screen. So that wasn't good. So what we're going to do is put in the correct code and run it. And now we get the coordinates of 5050 where we start it and I'm still I'm pressing keys and nothing is happening because there is no um, capture of those key pr those key presses uh, at all yet um, there's no uh, exploitation of them, there's no capture of them, there's no use of them they are being captured of course but we're just not running a program to actually exploit that at all so let's go back and um, make sure we understand that at this point we fill an oval shape where we project from x and y coordinates and we get the size of the oval okay so i've just changed the method from fill oval to draw oval because i want to draw the shape but not fill it just to explain what's going on. 
So if I compile this and I run it, we can see that the shape is drawn in yellow. That may be not very visible to you because it is yellow, but it's actually being drawn there. And the X and Y is the bounding box of a rectangle. That is, if this circle was drawn within a square, the top left hand corner of that square would be the uh, coordinates 50-50. If you drew a box around this circle, it would be 50-50 where it's actually been computed from to draw the oval. Similarly, if, if I go back, because that's not very visible at all, I think, uh, to fill that oval, um, like so, if I changed the X and Y, obviously we'd get it at a different position, but if I change the size so that one size is not the same as another, we will actually get an ellipse. So at the moment, obviously it's a circle because the, the sizes are the same. But if I put in, um, let's say 10 pick, well, I'm, I'm not sure if we see the 10 pixels actually. If we put it in at 50, we'll certainly see that. And, um, and then run this again. You can see now that it's not a circle. It is the ellipse that is at the fundamental. Um, the fundamental construction of this shape. We just made it into a circle by having both the sizes the same. So it was the same width and height. Whereas in this particular case, the height is bigger than the width. Okay, so let's go back to the code. We need to actually implement the uh, keys listener. So we need to implement key listener. And of course we need to make sure that it is in the right um, case. But also we need to make sure, as we can see from the message here, that moving, it says moving shape, our class is not abstract and does not override the abstract method key release in Java awt.event key listener. What's all that mean? Well, it means that we haven't put in uh, the necessary methods. I beg your pardon. Just auto lay out that. Right, so now we put in the key pressed key event as really directed. And what we are going to do is say that each step of changing X and Y will be 10 pixels. We could make it go quicker or faster from our perception by increasing the number of pixels that we kind of step instead of one pixel, 10 pixels in this case. But if we made it 100 pixels, it would kind of jerk across the screen, but it would move more quickly from our perception, cover the distance more quickly. A bit like a kangaroo jumping further because it's got longer legs than a smaller kangaroo. Okay, so what we haven't got any is any boundary checking at this point. But we are picking up what's happening with the left key, the right key, these are arrow keys, and the space bar. Okay, so let's see what happens when we run this. So when we run it, we actually get, as so, this. And I'm going to be pressing the arrow keys 
and nothing is happening at all. I press the space bar, nothing happens at all. Um, why do you think that is? Well, when we um, set up our constructor, let me just quit the program, we didn't actually set up the constructor properly. We did not say what we need to do, which is that we're going to add the key listener and set the focus to true on the panel or the canvas. It's very important to receive the key events. Without that, uh, nothing is going to be seen to happen. So let's run our shape as we have it at the moment. And what we, we have is this. And if I press the right arrow key, it goes right, but it goes off the canvas. It, it literally will disappear, as you can see. It sort of reappears. It goes off the left and it goes up as well, very bad. It goes into apparently negative territory. Uh, so it goes off the screen, basically. And if I press the space bar, nothing happens because although we have picked up the space bar press, we are not actually doing anything with it. We've got no behavioral change of state at all happening as a result of the space bar being pressed at the moment. We need to write a method for that. Okay, let's go back to the code. In order to keep the um, shape on the canvas or on the panel, we need to put in some boundary checkers. Now the place to do that is before we repaint it here. Before that repaint, we put in our boundary checking here. Um, we just reiterate what is going on here. This is a very uh, actually long-winded or explicit way of checking the boundaries. There's a simpler way using a max uh, method, but I'm not going to do that because it actually is harder to explain than using this explanation. So if the x coordinate is less than zero, the x coordinate is set to zero. So the shape, the circle, will be drawn in the top left-hand corner of our canvas or panel, or even frame if you want to think of it like that. Otherwise, if x is not less than zero, we check to see it's not off the right-hand side, as it were. We check that it's not going to be drawn off screen on the right-hand side. So if x is more than the width less the size of the circle, then if it is, we reset x to be the uh, right-hand side when the circle is drawn. That is, the x-coordinate is going to be uh, the right-hand side coordinate, as it were, uh, less the size of the circle. So it's offset to the left by the size of the circle. We do exactly the same uh, kind of check with the y-coordinate. Remember, of course, that the y-coordinate is at the top of the canvas or the panel or the frame and not at the bottom. It's at the top. So it increases from the top downwards and decreases from the bottom to the top. Um, so if y is less than zero, we set y to zero so it doesn't disappear off the top of the panel or the canvas. Otherwise, if it's going to be uh, greater than the height, that is off the bottom, so it disappears off the bottom of the panel or the frame, we uh, reset y to be drawn just at the bottom of the frame or the panel or the canvas, um, taking into account the size of the circle. Okay, so now it won't um, disappear, we hope. Right, let's run that and see if that is true. Here's our canvas. And I'm going to the right and it's stopped it. It's going to the left, stopped it. Going all the way to the bottom, stops it. Um, and at the top, of course, it won't go off the top like it did before. If I press the space bar, nothing happens. 
and the reason is we haven't written that method yet. So let's go and do that. Uh, now we have to choose where we're we going to do that. Uh, where would be a good point to draw it? Well, we could do it um, just before the main method. That would be okay, I think. So if we put it in there and we auto layout and we get rid of this little interloper mu symbol. And uh, when we now compile this, it should be okay. Uh, I won't run it just yet because actually, uh, although the space bar will be captured by the case statement, the switch and the case, these are mutually exclusive uh, because of the break statement here. These are mutually exclusive nested if statements, basically, if then else's. Um, now, if the, case, the, the space bar is picked up, um, it handles the space bar event, but uh, we're not telling it to do anything when that happens. So we do need to be um, telling it what to do. Uh, what I mean is, uh, if we look at the key event for the down arrow, if it's a down arrow event, the Y coordinate is incremented by 10 pixels. So it goes down. The drawing of the shape, the circle, will go down because the bordering invisible rectangle where the X and Y coordinates start from to project the ellipse, it will go down the screen and then it breaks. But in the case of the key event space, we're not doing anything. So we need to do it in here. We need to invoke the center circle method, which we just wrote. So if we do it there, it will invoke this. And what it will do is find the X coordinate uh, and set it to the middle point of the current canvas or panel. And it does this by dividing by two, both the X coordinate and the Y coordinate. Of course, it has to take into account the size of the shape. Otherwise, the shape won't be exactly in the middle of the screen, as it were. Um, just imagine if the size was a thousand pixels, it would make a big difference to the size being 10 pixels. So you can't just take into account the width and the height. If you're drawing a shape, you have to take account of the size of the shape. Okay, so we should have it uh, so it works now. So let's have a look at that. And when we run it, we will get this. And we get the behavior we had before with the right arrow key, the left arrow key, the up arrow key. And if I press the space bar, it goes back to the center, which is rather good. Okay. Okay, what could we do to extend this? What could you do? Uh, here is by compiling it. And what we find is that there is an error caused by my intrusive mu symbol. Let's try that again. And we just run, compile and run this. Sorry, I've gone into the wrong thing there. Um, if I run this like so, what if we had a situation where if we're below the middle, there's the middle, if we go below the middle, it changes its color to red. And if we're above the middle, it's got the color of yellow. So it goes from yellow to red. So a bit like the setting sun as it sets, it turns red. What do you think? Could we do that? How could we do that? Well, I'll leave you to think about that for the moment. I'll just give you a chance to pause and then come back and do something with that.
Well, the key part um, we need to look at is the paint component because it's here in the paint component that the shape is painted. Right, what we see here is we paint the uh, the actual oval to yellow here where we, we set the, the graphics color to yellow. Right, so um, that is we're setting the color to yellow of the fill oval method. Next, we set the color to black for the coordinates, the drawstring method that draws the coordinates, draws uh, characters on the screen. So it's here that we need to put in some code. Now the code I'm going to use is, is this code here. We're going to create a color or circle color and we're going to make it be red or yellow depending on where the Y coordinate is, whether it's above the half of the screen or should, sorry, below the half of the screen because remember it starts from zero and it gets bigger as it gets to the bottom of the screen uh, and if it's above it's yellow so we get the setting sun effect. Could that work? I think so. Let's compile it. Uh, there is a problem. It's probably that intrusive uh, corrupt signal uh, symbol, which I shall find and then run the program. So let's run the program. And there we have it. Uh, it's yellow, but if the sun was to go down, it would set O. It hasn't set. That's unfortunate. What went wrong? Let's see. Is it anything to do with I haven't gone down far enough? No, it's not. So some other reason for it failing. Well, we're looking at the Y coordinate and asking if it's more than halfway on the height. But what we should be looking at is the actual coordinate that reflects the shape. So actually this should be slightly different. It should check Y plus the size is more than the middle way, the vertical point of the screen. Let's try that, shall we? And we find that, that doesn't work either. So what do you think? What could be the reason for this? Well, the problem was in the setting of the color. We set the color to yellow and then we set the color according to where the position of the shape was but we need to actually set the color of the graphics entity to circle color. So um, we do set the color variable circle color here and I'm going to make it actually into the English English rather than the American English. And we must remember to put the uh, color consistent. Now, in my debugging, I had a printout um, to the terminal just to show me that the repaint was working in BlueJ as it's supposed to do. And it did. OK, so there we are. We have we, yeah, set color there. So we're going to set the graphics color for the oval to the circle color and that will be red in it when it's um, low, below the horizon as it were, and yellow when it's above. That's the idea, isn't it? So if we close this 
and uh, run the um, program. We get the red sun, shall we call it a sun, um, because it is uh, below the halfway mark. And when it goes above, it becomes yellow. Remember, this is on the Y coordinate that this is being projected. If we make this uh, larger, does that make any difference? Well, actually it does. We can see it. It does, in fact, set the red sun as it goes below the horizon. Well, it's a, a bigger canvas. We can see that. And the, y, the x coordinate is really irrelevant. It's only the y coordinate that really matters here. There we go. And so it doesn't matter where it is on the screen. If I get on this little demonstration project of how to create a shape using swing in BlueJay and move it about the screen and even having some effects on the color of the shape according to where on the screen or the panel or the frame it is. I hope this has been useful.